So you've been doing this quite a while. When you mentioned that you started out buying houses uh, subject to the existing note, take a second and tell our audience uh, what that means to buy a house subject to the existing note. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really not buy. It's more like just take possession of. So when you acquire a piece of real estate subject to, essentially what you're doing is you're taking over somebody else's monthly payments. And when I got started state, I wanted to do it in a manner that would allow me to take on very little risk, control a lot of property and do so very quickly. And so as I looked at the different ways of getting into real estate, what I learned is that here in Texas, where I live, you could purchase a list of all of the people that were in pre foreclosure. That means that the lenders had filed, the property was now posted for foreclosure, and all of these people were about to lose their homes through the foreclosure process. And so every month, me and my team were buying this list. It was a couple thousand people. And then we would take that list, Jay, and we would create a mail merge, and we would mail out a real nice letter to all of the people explaining to them that we were investors, we wanted to hopefully help them get out of this very, very dire set of consequences that they were facing. And so my phone started ringing off the hook. People would call me and I would schedule appointments with a lot of these homeowners going by their homes, sitting down in their living room and really just explaining to them that I wanted to help them out. There were many things that they were unaware of that a lot of lenders didn't want them to know, like loan modification, short sales, forbearance agreements. And so I basically had most of these people sign what's called a mortgage release of authorization form that allowed me to fax or email that into the mortgage company. And basically then I could call a couple days later and start asking questions where the lenders would share information with me. And I used to structure deals and then go back to these homeowners and say, hey, man, I got great news for you. Your lender is willing to structure what we call a forbearance agreement. And all we need to do is come up with something like $5,000 and wire it to them here in the next couple of days. That'll stop the, for, uh, the foreclosure process altogether. And they would look at me like, well, you know, if we had $5,000, we wouldn't be in foreclosure. And I said, well, I've got another solution, perhaps. I'll give you $2,500 to move out, maybe get into a small rental or an apartment, and you'll deed the property over to me. And what I'll do is I'll pay your lender that $5,000 and I'll start making your monthly payments, clean up the property and then put it into my rental portfolio. And they looked at me like a knight in shining armor. And so the beautiful thing about subject two is number one, you meaning the investor are not physically going through the underwriting process to get a mortgage or getting a loan. You don't have to qualify for anything. Number two, all you're doing is you're taking over somebody else's monthly payments. And that's exactly what subject to means. You're acquiring a piece of real estate subject to the lending that's already in place in somebody else's name. And then you simply have a moral obligation to make good on that promise. And I did that, Jay, and I acquired probably well over 10 properties that way. And then what I did is after I got them rented, I would do a cash out refinance. And I'd sometimes pull out 15, 20, 25, $30,000 in equity that many of these people had locked up in their property that they were about to lose in the foreclosure process. And then of course that money came to me and that's how I was able to reinvest and acquire more real estate. That's beautiful.